This video serves as an inter-process communication boot camp using Intel's message passing interface, or usually known as MPI. My name is Rick Leinecker. There were quite a few technologies that came before MPI, which provided inter-process communication mechanisms. The first, and maybe best known, is the component object model. This is where you could create a module that became a mediator between uh, multiple applications, and it worked fairly well. Um, the second was the distributed component object model, which was a takeoff on the original component object model, but, but the distributed version actually worked across remote machines, so it worked really well. Both of these, however, um, the drawback to them was it took quite a considerable amount of effort to create them and use them. Uh, TCP IP was another mechanism of, of talking between multiple applications, and it worked fairly well, but you could get into situations where maybe security issues would arise on a computer, um, say if your antivirus program was looking for these types of things and it would stop them from happening. Uh, shared memory files was another good way, and uh, I've used this many times. Uh, the problem with shared memory files is the, the technique is kind of slow. So if you're looking for high performance, uh, that was not the way to go. You could also send Windows messages, and there's a really easy mechanism using the Windows API where you find a window handle and you use send message and post message to, to send simple messages between applications. And this works fairly well, but it's, it's somewhat complicated. And finally, you could use pipes or named pipes. And these uh, were similar to shared memory files in that they were somewhat slow. So all of these provided inter-process communications uh, going, going quite a few years back. However, they all had their drawbacks, such as possible security concerns, possible um, performance issues, and so forth. So what we're going to talk about in this video is Intel's implementation of the MPI standard. Now, Intel did not invent or create the MPI standard. It's been around for probably 20 years by now but they have created an awesome implementation for you. Um, it is scalable. You can go from one to hundreds of processes. It is fast. It benchmarks faster than all the techniques that we previously mentioned. It gives you a very simple approach to programming. And as you'll see in a few minutes with the examples I show, it's just several lines of code to send messages to remote processes. And it provides inter-process communication between processes. Okay, so let's write a program. As you can see, I have Visual Studio opened up with the Hello MPI World program ready to go. But before we do any programming, we need to make sure our configuration is okay. First, make sure you're using the Intel compiler. Second, go to your configuration manager and make sure you're using x64. Now, if you don't see x64 there, you have to click on that new selection and create it. The last thing we're going to do is go into our project properties and make sure that we have the extra directories listed. Okay, so this is where MPI got installed to, and that's the include directory. Let's go to linker. This is the extra lib directory where MPI got installed. And finally, we're going to make sure that impi.lib and impicxx.lib get linked in. And once we do that, everybody should be happy. Okay, so let's include mpi.h. And let's add some boilerplate code, which we'll explain in just a moment. Now, before we even do that, you'll notice that MPI init uh, is complaining, and that's because it doesn't know what a tchar is. So we're going to go up here and change that to char, and then it'll be happy. So that init is going to initialize MPI based on the command line arguments, and for this example, we're not going to have any. So nothing will happen there. Um, we get the size, and now the rank is going to be the order that this application got uh, instantiated. For instance, I might actually run five copies of this, and, and then I'd get values here of rank 0, 1, 2, 3, 4. Okay, so if you run multiple 
uh, applications, either instances of one application or instances of, of different applications, it will give you the, the order in which they loaded. Finally, we get the processor name here, and then we go ahead and print out the information, and NPI finalizes what we do when we're done, just to clean things up. Now, there is a detail that we have to pay attention to, and that is this. Each, MP, each MPI application um, must have credentials which are registered to it. Um, and my development box, uh, my login doesn't have a password, and uh, it's not going to take to that very kindly. So what I had to do is I had to create a special account with administrative rights and, and make sure I had a password. So we have to go ahead and register that. So we do uh, MPI exec dash register. And then this is going to be hello MPI world exe. So we've got to register our credentials for that. And it's going to ask me tester my password, confirm my password. So that way it has my credentials associated with that application. Okay, so I'm going to go ahead and run it from MPI exec. There you go. Hello, MPI world. And it shows the rank of zero. I only ran one. But if I go back here and I run two, such as that, I'll see it come up twice with a rank of zero and one. Okay, so now let's write a pair of programs that communicate with each other. So here I have a program called test MPI one. And it's the exact same boilerplate code that you saw in that last program, the Hello World program, except that I added a string buffer here where I copied a message into it. And this is MPI1, test MPI1, and I just uh, string copy that message in. And the reason for the sleep is because I want to make sure that both programs are uh, properly loaded in before I try to send the message. Then I send the message with a single line. Notice how simple the message sending API is. Okay, so that actually should send the message to the remote computer, which actually happens to be test MPI2. And all that program does is grabs or creates a buffer and does a receive with a single line of code and prints out the message that it gets. Okay, pretty easy. And now we're going to go ahead and run these programs, both of them, with MPI exec from the command line. Okay, notice my command line for the first program is dash n1, meaning I'm just going to run it one time, test mpi1.exe, and then comes a colon. And I just separate each exe that I'm going to run with a colon. And then for the next one, it's dash n1, test mpi2.exe. So when I run it, you see that the typical um, messages that we saw before, hello world of test MPI 1, hello world of test MPI 2, but there's also that message that we sent. This is a test message from this computer running test MPI 1. So as you can see, using MPI with the Intel tools is very, very easy, very, very powerful, and can bring your inter-process communications to a whole new level.